Good morning. <laughs> what can I say? It has been a momentous weekend. Um, you've already seen the video I put out of buying antiques and collectibles at car boot sale in Cardiff uh, on Saturday. And that was nothing short than absolutely amazing. But I also went to Malvin Flea Market on the Sunday. And if I tell you that this was one of the biggest flea markets I have ever seen up there, it would be an understatement. Safe to say, I didn't get around it all in the one day. I didn't get to do a couple of the hangers. It was huge. I bought some absolutely spectacular pieces, and I mean spectacular. Um, today you're going to get to take a look at most of what I bought, if not all of what I bought in one video. Um, some of you are going to love, some of you are going to like, some of you may not like, but I've paid a lot of money for a lot of it. So, today we're going to have a whole video um, of epic proportions. Hopefully you will enjoy. Shall we get started? <clears throat> Now, I intend to put photographs, because these are such good items, in my opinion, I intend to put photographs after every single item, so you'll get proper look at everything afterwards. So, we're gonna start off with this. Now, what is it? Okay, so, we have a big silver plate charger. It is decorated in very high relief. You can see just how high is sticking out here. I'd say it's a good inch and a half, two inches in relief. Now, you, it is depicting a scene of Bella Orphan. Bella Orphan was around before the days of Hercules and was, was or is considered um, a great hero in Greek mythology. He uh, was a slayer of monsters along the likes of Perseus and Cadmus. Um, so you have Bellerophon here riding Pegasus, which is the winged horse. You have all the cherubs in the clouds. He's holding some scroll up here. <clears throat> no doubt this is going to have some very deep Greek meaning or maybe some important battle. I'll put in photographs as I've said. Now it's got a registration number down on the left here and over here it is signed Elkington and Co. Now Elkington and Co are one of the best names that you want on silver and silver plate of the 19th century. If I turn it around you can see just how deep cast this is but on, not just that it's actually got another plaque for Elkington and Co on the back. I haven't cleaned it, it has got plate wear. So you can see some of the copper coming through under the plate. So this is silver on copper. Um, but this is absolutely spectacular. But it didn't come in cheap. Now, I haggled with this one. Um, the dealer wanted 250 and I got it for 200 I offered 200 I think it is a really rare thing. Um, I've done my research on there. I have found an identical one in similar to worse condition sold at 350 um, which I'll splice in the photograph of that afterwards now when you look at the images. But I just love the image, the scene and to find a nice silver plate charger like this is quite something. So I'm going to double my money on it and at the very least it is a really good story and an amazing item to sit on my website. I don't know what you think. If you love um, these sort of mythical or renaissance type um, chargers and things, then uh, you're going to love this one. So that's the first of the items. This uh, is going to be uh, a long video today. It's going to be some absolutely breathtaking items.
Okay, this next piece has to be my favourite of the day. I've got some spectacular stuff, but this has to be my favourite. Now we have a 19th century gold and silver over copper um, tatsa. So silver, uh, gil silver, silvered copper and gilt on copper. Um, anyway, let me show you the condition of this. Look at this. Look at the, how beautiful that is and the condition on it. Underneath here you have this classical scene here, neoclassical scenes. It is quite spectacular and breathtaking. Again, this example carries a stamp of Elkington & Co. So again, we have another piece by the same factory as the last. Now this one, I have done a lot of research on. This one is more than special. They have the identical example to this in the Metropolitan Museum in uh, America. However, it is nowhere near in the condition this is in. I'm going to splice in lots of photographs for you to see the condition of this. It is breathtaking. It is beautiful. Now, it has got some faults. The rim is slightly out of shape. You know, it's had little knocks here and there. It's not dead perfect uh, round. And there's a little... You know, there's a little area up there where the gilt is a little rough. Um, probably where they've had a dent and been pushed back. But there's no loss pretty much anyway. And look at that. I have never seen a piece of Elkington in this condition. Look at that scene. Look at the stem on it and the foot. This is quite breathtaking to be totally honest with you. It is right up there and I can see why the museum have one. I also done some research searching on eBay and things like that and I found two examples one up for sale for £1,500 and another up for sale for £700. I managed to buy this up in Malvin for £185 and if I tell you now I don't want to let it go. It's on my website but I do not want to let it go. This is as good an item as you would ever hope to buy. I tell you what, if you carried a hallmark on there, wow. Because I'm assuming it's uh, on copper, but um, wouldn't, it have, wouldn't it have been amazing if it was solid silver underneath that? But there's no hallmarks, I have scoured it, trust me. So it's on copper, and I just love this scene. <coughs> Excuse me. Honestly, if you actually look at the images, you know, there is so much going on to see. Even here, you got all the cherubs in the background. It is just spectacular. You got a cherub with wings up there, flying around. It is just amazing. I'm gonna put in photographs. But again, I paid 185 pounds for this, for my money where my mouth is. And I think it is breathtaking. Okay, the day isn't all going to be metal weight, but I have got quite a bit of metal weight to show you. This next piece only cost me a tenner. Now, I've done some uh, looking online again. This piece was produced for Liberty in the Tudrick range. Uh, we believe it's by Archibald Knox, but not 100% yet. Um, but the uh, other one I found for sale is as Archibald Knox. It's hammered pewter. And it is made in England, Tudrick Pewter 01285. Now, 
they are selling this as a quake, which is a drinking cup. I bought it thinking it might be a bowl, but they're selling it as a quake, and they are, I have found examples at £100. Sold prices, as well as uh, asking prices. So you can see it's all hammered. It's by uh, Liberty, oh, two drink range for Liberty, and we believe by Archibald Knox, and it was a tenner. And there's the stamp. Hopefully you can see that, I can't tell. But if not, it'll be a photograph of it anyway. So another absolute cracking thing. And this was just sat on a table full of junk pewter, you know, craftsmen and things like that, pewter. And I saw this and I thought them handles really stood out. And I just picked it up, too, Drake, how much? Tenner. Thank you very much. Okay, I don't know what happened, but I seem to have gone down an art line this um, time, but in metal way. Here we have a spectacular bronze. And this is very, again, neoclassical or classical scene again. Very much like the Tatsa and uh, the others. Now, this piece is mounted on marble. It has the seal in the back. Um, beautiful thing, solid bronze. And it is fully stamped up. E Y on, and it's dated. I can't read that without the eyeglass. But it's dated 1848. Now Edward Wyon is an English artist or British artist rather from 1811 through to 1885. And I've already got multiple pieces by this artist on my website, so I already knew to buy it. Now the dealer offered this to me for 100 pounds. And I've seen sold examples from filming these uh, for previous videos, sold at three and four hundred pound. So again, that was an absolute steal. On marble, solid bronze, signed and dated, which you'll see the photographs of in just a moment, and better images. But spectacular. Ready to go, beautiful work of art, with the history behind it and the provenance, and solid bronze. And to be honest with you, I absolutely just love this type of work. It's not everybody's taste, but it's certainly my taste. Um, what do they say? Buy things you love and someone else will love them too. But for £100, that was a gift. It really was a gift. Okay, so we've got another bit of metal away, but this one's a bit mixed. This is Japanese, and it is absolutely beautiful. Look at that. So we've got a carved wooden base. We have a bronze mouse climbing onto a bronze apple uh, with ivory embellishments. Now I wish it didn't have the ivory on there. I wish it was just more boxwood or something, because I cannot sell this overseas, unfortunately, now because it'll be destroyed because of the little bit of ivory embellishment on there. Um, God, look at that mouse climbing up on the apple. It is absolutely spectacular. Um, I would think late 19th century, Japanese, bronze, bronze, ivory, and nice bit of wood. But the quality in this is quite something. Now I've paid 120 pounds for this. And believe me, when I tell you I rate it, it would be an understatement. I think it's absolutely spectacular. It's not signed, though, unfortunately. I can't see a signature on there. But um, the late, the, it was a very old lady I purchased it off up in Malvin, and she was selling some of the finest oriental pieces I have ever seen. She had a carving of um, Buddha uh, done during the Ming period. Very worn. Oh God, it was gorgeous, but I couldn't get her down. The lowest I could get her to was 800. Um, I tried going in five, 600, she didn't want to know, so I left it. 
she wanted 800 and I thought with the damage on the base and things it was just too much for me but her entire stall was absolutely spectacular and magnificent. Another piece I wanted off her stall, she had, if I put this down a second, um, she had an 18th century hand carved bowl. Um, and there was some debate as to whether it was English or whether it was continental. And a couple of us believed it was English and it was spectacular. It must have been a foot and a half, two foot diameter. All hand carved, beautiful patina. And there was another gentleman holding it while I was buying this um, bronze. And it was £110 and I wanted it. And I stood there and stood there. Um, I'd already purchased this. So I just spent the 20 minutes he was there examining the bowl, waiting for him to put it down, examining the Ming uh, carving. So to say her stall was one of the best I saw up there would be an understatement. The items she had on there were spectacular, very fairly priced. So yeah, she was by far the best stall up there, and to be honest though, her prices were very, very reasonable. To buy this for £120 shouldn't have happened really, it is quite something. I could see this going in auction in the hundreds, comfortably, quite a few hundred pounds. So, really pleased. It's been one of them days uh, where everything was very expensive. I did struggle with a lot of people, I, you know, I was picking up 18th century drinking glasses and they were like, £120 for this, £120 for that, £200 for this. I picked up a Chinese bronze, I'm not even 100% what it was, I, I'm going to say a, a bowl and cover, but the cover was pierced, but it wasn't a sensor or burner. Underneath it had a Jundi mark, um, and it was probably late Ming or early Qing. And I asked him how much, thinking, well I'll pay a couple of hundred pounds. In my head, I had, I will pay a couple of hundred pounds, I take a gamble, take it home, and I might have a real jackpot. And he went, 1,500 pounds. <laughs> so, I didn't buy that. So, yeah. But, I found it, everything I was picking up was priced above what I was thinking of selling it for, let alone um, buying it for. So, yeah. But I love, so far, I love every single thing I bought. A stall came in and they were unpacking and they unpacked like three, four, five tables full of Georgian and Victorian glass. And every single glass was a fiver piece across the board. Uh, and I'm gonna show you those in just a moment. But before I do, I got one or two pieces here. This piece came in from the same dealer as the Elkington Taza. I'd done a deal for the two pieces. So this one owes me about 20, 25 pounds. It is a Victorian glass dump. And I just love this flower here. Well, it's not a flower, rather, like a fountain coming up and just spraying over. It is spectacular. It's in standard bottle green. Um, and it's quite narrow. It's almost like, you know, you, when you see these dumps, they're big, beautiful, chunky dump, dumps. But this is a really nice example. It's in lovely condition. Um, and for 20, 25 quid, I think it was, it was either 20 or 25 pound we worked out with the deal. Um, it's a really cracking thing. I'm over the moon with that. And this next piece come in with the Japanese bronze. The mouse with the apple. This would have been a lot of money. <clears throat> what is it? It is Irish, or Anglo-Irish. It is late 18th to very early 19th century, so about 1790 to 1800. It has a lemon squeeze a foot. Now, the best way for you to identify a lemon squeeze a foot uh, would be imagine you you know the lemon squeeze as you get squish that on, pull it off. That would the indentation it makes would give you the lemon squeeze a foot. It's all cut and it has a turned over rim. Now I can tell you now if you add a six or eight inch bowl it with the same um, details, you'd be up a thousand pound, fifteen hundred pound. A salt should be up 150, 200 pound minimum. 
unfortunately it has some damage here on the back here on the turned over rim now you have a couple of options believe it or not it's actually low enough that you could recut the rim and make it a shorter turnover or you could just put it to the back and just enjoy it now she charged me a fiver for it and i thought to myself do you know what i have never ever seen a large master salt like this or small bowl like this with a turned over rim and the lemon squeezer foot for a fiver i was having it even if i kept it just to enjoy myself the damage does some serious devaluation to this and um, there's not a lot of collectors now who would want it but this is rare enough that it still wouldn't surprise me if you went for 50 pound or 75 pound it is that rare and i'll probably put this one on ebay with a 20 or 30 pound starting bid because if they don't go for that i'm going to keep it and i'm going to leave it on auction i'm going to see where it goes and you can get an update on this one on a later date later video to see what it's sold for um and bear in mind it's damaged without the damage i wouldn't even question it'd be up 150 pound on my website at least um this is absolutely spectacular i love it so um uh, lemon squeeze a foot if you want to know how to identify <coughs> 18th century drinking glasses and antique glass and things like that. I have actually done videos on identifying Georgian drinking glasses. I've done a video on how to identify the feet, how to identify the stems. I haven't got around to doing the bowls yet, I've been too busy. Um, but that is... I love it and heartbroken at the same time with this damage. But you know what? That will never be binned because if uh, it doesn't sell to a real collector, it's going to be kept by me. What buying trip would be uh, fulfilled for a Welshman without buying a Welsh miner's lamp? In its uh, original box, we have a little copper and brass miner's lamp. Unfortunately, it is the Hock Hockley Company, not Thomson Williams, but uh, Hockney, Hockley. Either way, it's um, unfortunately not the Thompson Williams and they're the ones that pull the money. But still a nice little miner's lamp. Lamp and light, limelight company, Hockley. So, I love miner's lamps, as you know. If you get a small Thompson Williams miner's lamp, they sell for more than the big ones. And if you get a midget, they are seriously rare. But this cost me a tenner. With a box for a tenner, I can tell you now that's going to fly out of my shop. No time at all for £25. So £20 for the lamp, fibre for the box basically. Um, and it will fly out. I'm not going to struggle to sell that at all. In fact, blink of an eye. Next piece, another bit of metal away. Yes, it is a funnel, but this isn't just a funnel, it's a champagne funnel um, or a wine funnel. So you imagine 200 years ago or when you had a bottle, um, it would have sediment or bits of cork or whatever floating around. You'd put it through the funnel, it would sieve all this rubbish out and then you'd have a nice clean drink at the bottom. Um, or you'd use it for decanting, you know, if you want to take and put it into a decanter. This is a Georgian Sheffield plate uh, funnel. It has got a few dents on there, but it is a really nice example. You know, I haven't seen a Georgian wine or champagne funnel for years. Now this was twenty pounds. Um, I'm gonna push the couple of dents out that it's got. It's hollow, so it's easy enough. I'll just get something. I won't damage it. Push the dents out a little bit, um, so it just visually is just a little bit more peeling. But that is a beautiful. And quite a rare little thing these days. I paid £20 for it and comfortably I know £45, £50, no problem at all on a um, Sheffield Plate Georgian Champagne funnel. Really nice object and it's been a long time since I've had one. Anything wine related, corkscrews and funnels and things like that, they sell for big money. Okay, this next piece, gonna get a few people excited. Look at that beautiful colours. Now this is French. Opa uh, opaque, opalescent, opalescent. This is French 
opalescent glass with a very good name behind it and a beautiful pattern and up against the right background this just pops it's beautiful now I've got a bowl it has got some surface scratching it's been used unfortunately rather than just displayed but it is in good condition and it does have a, the maker's stamp on there and it is Etlin France number 122 now I can tell you now if I'd been in the leak I'd have already had it sold <coughs> excuse me you've got a few companies that um, done stuff in the style of the leak um, you know we had Joblin here in the UK you got Eklin you got Sabino um, this is a good example it's eight inches give or take eight nine inches on diameter and it's got roses to the back and I'm gonna splice in photographs now I paid 40 pound for this a signed piece of Eklin from France crystal or pleasant um, you could probably ask a hundred hundred and twenty pound for this bowl comfortably and it's not in bad condition at all it's obviously got tiny nibbling you know frit rims rim fritting rather um, and a little bit of surface scratching all of which to be honest you could polish the surface scratching out it wouldn't make any difference such a nice thing 40 pounds I'm very happy Okay, so what are they? Now these are Victorian. They are known as a penny lick. Uh, you can get one penny lick, you can get two penny lick. Why do they call them a penny lick? Well, put this down there. You imagine during the Victorian era, you'd go up to your ice cream vendor. He would then put a little dollop of ice cream on your glass and you would take the glass away and you would lick it until you licked it clean then you would take it back to the ice cream vendor and give him back his glass. These were banned because of the spread of tuberculosis. Yeah, TB. Um, they were very unhygienic. People, you know, you'd use them, pass them on and so forth. Now, these are hand blown. They're 19th century and they cost me a fiver each. If you went back five, eight years, these would be a hundred pound each, no problem at all. These days, they're like 25, 30 pound, but they're at a fiver each, they got a lovely bit of history behind them. They are very collectible. This one's a bit rough um, with it with seamed here, because it's press molded. Um, it's a bit rough on the joins, but no chips, no cracks, just a really nice pair of penny licks. And 10 of the pair, fiver each, do you know what? They're really collectible. They just add something, a different element. Allow me to talk about something else on my website and a different element. Pretty much everything or 90% of what I've bought today is for, for the website, not for eBay. Some bits will go in the shop. <coughs> now this piece I've bought, it's damaged. I don't buy damaged much. <laughs> saying that you've already seen that I bought the damaged salt but when it comes in at this price you just can't leave it there so we've had a piece of Claris Cliff this is a mustard or preserved jar it's got the little hole there for the spoon it's got a bumblebee or something on the top here so I would presume it could be a honey jar it's Claris Cliff bizarre pattern there's a signed piece of Claris Cliff hand painted and it cost me a tenner however it has been chipped and painted in there I'm not sure if that one was done in the factory looking at that one but it's also got a chip on the rim here and the bumblebee has been off and glued back on so and actually looking at this one is under the glaze so this one I think was done in the firing um, I really do looking at that that's under glazed um, so you've got a few chips on the rim and the B has been off other than that I think the rest of it was done in the making but it cost me a tenner for a Claris Cliff bizarre pattern 
you know, honeypot. Okay, it's not perfect, but not everybody can afford the money of a perfect example. I put 35, 40 pound on that, put it in the shop here, it's not going on the website, it's because of the damage, it's not good enough for my website. Um, it'll go in the shop here, maybe 35 pounds, something like that, and I guarantee you a Claris Cliff collector is going to come in and say, I need that for my collection, or I want that, I absolutely love it. Um, I'm not going to go under 30, 35 pound, to be honest with you, I think it's uh, in perfect condition, that would have been a fair bit of money. Um, but for a tenner, if I can pull 30, 35 pound back off that, I'm really happy and I know I will make a collector very happy because not everybody can afford the perfect. Um, and it does visually look really nice. Okay, next we have a pair or two pewter and bronze or pewter and copper dactarines. Now these have got good age to them. Look at that. Look at that patina. Now my duck is a little out of shape, but if I pull him open, if I can get him open now, bear with me. Okay, I don't want to damage it, so I'll open it in a minute. Um, I'll show you the other one I've got now. But basically, ductarines, you can see there the legs coming down in copper and the wings and all the embellishments. I'm thinking possibly Chinese. That's what I'm thinking. Here's the smaller of the example. It would have been a graduated set of three probably, um, which is now two. But being that they're pewter, they're such soft metal, they've gone a little out of shape, warped a bit there, haven't I? I don't want to force this lid on in case I can't get it back off again. Um, I will get the other lid off. But really soft metal um like a pewter or something like that and all embellished with copper now i only paid a tenner for the two ducks really really unusual um i haven't even researched them yet but i do think that they're going to be very collectible i love ducks anyway now you could put your eggs in them or to be honest though i may end up keeping these um, seal them up or close them tidy so they're not open and put them in my garden and they can just sit in it because of what they are they almost feel like lead they're that heavy I don't, think, I don't know if they're pewter or if they're lead to be honest with you I think they're lead I think these are lead ducks they are they're not pewter they're lead so you can imagine the weight on them they are heavy that's strange so these need a bit of research but other than that I think they're going to end up in my garden um, next to my uh, fish pond or in my rockery area, but um, I rate them, they were a tenner, that's all they were. And they're really, really nice. And they, once they weather up, these are gonna be absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep these and put them in the garden for a tenner. What can I say, I can't help myself. <laughs> Don't forget, we got all the Georgian glass to look at in just a moment, but uh, I wanna show you my last bit of metal away. I think it's my last bit. We have a nice Victorian silver plated ladle um, look at the price they charged me on that ladle just weren't gonna leave it there it's got a full set of plate marks on the back you know it's a good size ladle it's decorative do you know I get 15 20 pound for a ladle like that no problem at all and it was three quid you know it's just a nice well that could go on eBay no problem at all and would sell comfortably on eBay um, punch ladle soup ladle whatever you want it's just a nice bit of English silver plate and it will clean up a treat but this stuff is all farm fresh as I bought it been in a box and now I'm pulling it out to film it for you so you're seeing it as I buy it okay so last piece before we go and look at the Georgian drinking glasses and we have a large champagne bucket now this I believe is Scandinavian I could be wrong but I believe it's Scandinavian and it has a look of being by Itala or Costa or some long end lines. It's got this almost ice effect glass that you see. Now there's a few factories make it. Itala do an almost identical version of this ice glass on candlesticks. But then you got like the, at the same time you got Costa, you know, the snowball candle holders. They're very similar. So it's, uh, I got research to do on this one. It cost me 20 pounds, so just a score. It's a large example. 
and ice buckets are very collectible. Now, if I can find out who made this, um, you know, let's be honest, just as a Scandinavian cracked ice champagne bucket, you're talking £75. If I can find out a good name and good designer behind it, you know, I could add a few quid to that again. Um, but a really nice, beautiful thing, um, in good condition. Uh, ice buckets again. It's um, an upper class object and it's a desirable piece. You know, it's like the wine related items, you know. If it's related to do with wine and champagne and things like that, they always pull money. Champagne buckets always pull money. Ice buckets always pull money. And that is a good example. I tell you now, I don't, don't know if you can see just how impressive it is on the video, but that is a bloody good looking example. It really is. Okay, so here we come to some of the glass that I've purchased. Now, this one here is again, lemon squeezer foot. You can see the lemon squeezer base there, really nice. Facet cut or panel cut rather um, bowl with the engraving. And now I had two of those with the lemon squeezer foot. These dates were around 1800. Now I paid £20 a glass for those. This here is known as a wine glass cooler or rinser. Um, and you would literally put your glasses in and the stem would come out here. So you'd have your bowl in there and the stem would come out. Now this is a double so you could have two glasses. It's Georgian again. There's our big ground and polished pontal on there. Cut into the body again. Double lip. Again, this was a fiver. Now rinsers don't always pull the money like they used to, but still a nice bit of early glass. Then we had this. Now it's engraved uh, staples with a pair of keys. But this is a Georgian again. Look at that beautiful. That is what's known as a snapped and sharp pontal because it hasn't been ground out. Let me show you the difference. That one there, you see that big dip, the ditch? So you can see they've ground it down and then polished it smooth. This one, they've snapped it off the rod and just left it there. That's the difference between the pontals. Nice Georgian glass like that. And again, it cost me £20. Beautiful thing. Nice big rummer. This one here is a fly or wasp trap. It's Victorian. It's hand-blown glass. And... You would put some sugar water or something on the inside, put a cork on the top. Flies now would come underneath, crawl up and in, and in, and they would be trapped. They couldn't get out and then they'd die in there. That was a tenner. And then I had a group of glasses for a fiver. This being the first, we got a nice Victorian rummer. Look at the wear on that foot. Now that is what authentic wear should look like on an early glass. Look at that around the rim here. That is good, good way. And for a fiver, that's a cracker. These next two glasses I bought with the job lot. Now, the penny licks come in for £5 each. These come in for £5 each. That come in for a fiver. Uh, I'm sorry. The penny licks come in for a fiver each. These two come in for a fiver each. The rinser come in for a fiver. Um, all from the same dealer. As did this rummer at the back here. Now, unfortunately, I was too quick jumping the gun because it was so rare. Do you see this little fracture in the glass there? Now, this is a beautiful Georgian. Snap pontal, ball nope, beautiful barrel bowl, barrel shaped bowl. That is a real nice example of a Georgian drinking glass. Unfortunately, with that fracture in there, it's no longer good enough for my website. Um, and I'll sell that for 10 or 15 pounds now for someone who wants to learn the subject or just have a display piece. And again, this one, Nice rummer, bladed nope, three part construction. Early drinking glasses are always made in three parts. You get the bowl, the stem and the foot all made separately and put together. This one's got a snapped and sharp pontal again. Do you see that pontal mark? You can see it there where it's been broken off and it hasn't been polished smooth again. And they have a beautiful sound. And I can't flip that one tidy. However, again, I'm not sure I think that I damaged this one in bringing it home because uh, I, I checked the rims and that one certainly wasn't chipped when I bought it. 
So, and I take boxes and bubble wrap to wrap my items all the time. So that would have been maybe a 40 or 50 pound glass uh, for the fiver, but is now gonna go out again, same as that one, 10 or 15 pound of glass just as display pieces. We all make mistakes. Um, I took bubble wrap with me, I took heavy plastic crates with me, and every item was bought, wrapped up, and put in the crates. However, what I didn't do was separate the metal away from the glass, which is what I think I should have done. Those heavy lead ducks and the tatsas and all the rest of it were all in the same box, and I think I've chipped, or I could have damaged both those glasses in the box on the way home. I've certainly damaged the one, I know that. So that's a valuable lesson for me for next time. Even after all these years, I'm still learning. You know, I take the time to wrap the stuff in bubble wrap and I've still damaged it, so it's bad luck. But I don't know what you think. I think that has been an absolute spectacular day. To buy something like that Elkington Tatsa that they've already got in the Metropolitan Museum in uh, New York, um, you know, is wonderful. And to be honest with you, I bought things I love. I don't care if anything I've bought today doesn't sell. I could live with every single piece. I really could. And that's what you want. If you love it, someone else is going to love it. Because when you talk about it, the passion you have for that item is going to come across. And then people are going to go, I would like that. So that's uh, the end of my Malvin haul. Um, I didn't see many people I knew up here this week. Shockingly. Because last time, <laughs> I, didn't, I couldn't get to a stall without saying hello to somebody. Um, but it was big, it was really big. And to be honest with you, I struggled. A lot of what I asked for, I just couldn't afford um, or didn't see a profit on. So, I don't know what you think of the video. Um, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know if you've got a favorite. Um, share some of what you bought. I'm happy um, and I'll speak to you soon. I've got, um, I'm gonna do a couple of reseller vlogs and a couple of other videos. And I've also done a video of creating a park for my daughter. So I'm going to film that as well and show you our lockdown park. So 